The Egypt's military has ousted the country's president. The announcement comes after days of anti-government protests. Now those protests are turning to celebration. The country's military is calling for early elections and suspending, the Egypt's, uh, suspending Egypt's constitution. Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is being replaced by the chief justice of the country's constitutional court. Now, Jonathan uh, Schnazer is the vice president for research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's in our Washington studio. Jonathan, we were just talking to somebody who works for the same foundation as, as you do, but he was in Cairo. Uh, I want to ask you, though, the military has stepped in. So what specifically happens now? Well, we have a uh, transition period yet again, not unlike what we saw in 2011 after the fall of Hosni Mubarak. Uh, I think what, what we're looking at right now is the uh, anti-Islamist opposition basically seeking a do-over. They didn't like how things have gone over the last two years. They don't like the way that the uh, institutions have been built, uh, specifically the way they've been populated by the Muslim Brotherhood leadership. And so they're coming in, they're toppling the Brotherhood uh, with the idea of uh, ultimately leading to new elections yet again with the hope that this time Islamists don't come to power uh, and that uh, democratic institutions can be preserved. Okay, but is anything going to change in terms of this process as opposed to uh, what we saw last time? Well, I think, you know, there, there's a sense here that uh, perhaps Egyptians have learned a little bit more uh, about, the, about themselves, about their political system. In other words, the first time, I don't think the Egyptians were prepared uh, for the political transition that was about to take place. Now, at least among the secular opposition, they have a better sense of what they want, and they perhaps may even have leaders who could help guide the process. So, the, again, we, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen here next, but the hope is that this uh, secular opposition has it together just a little bit more than last time. Okay, so what's the best case scenario for the transition? Best case scenario would be several months uh, of uh, leading up to new elections. And that those new elections would, would, uh, would bring someone to power who would be able to govern inclusively. That was the one thing that the Muslim Brotherhood did not do well. Uh, apart from the, fa of the fact that they drove the Egyptian economy uh, really uh, into the ground. And so what, what you're looking for is uh, leadership who could, A, bring uh, Egypt out of, uh, out of the basement uh, economically uh, and to be able to restructure its loans and to be able to survive that way, but also to find a way to include uh, Egypt's secular opposition, Copts, uh, other minorities within Egypt who really did not feel that they had a say in government and that was one of the reasons that, uh, the, that the Muslim Brotherhood was ultimately brought down. Yeah, but those who support the Muslim Brotherhood and speaking to some reporters in Egypt, they say there are you know hundreds of thousands that still do support it, uh, the, the, that party. You know, a number of people are going to look at this and say, well, what went wrong here in terms of democracy? Because this was supposed to be the first, uh, Mohamed Morsi won Egypt's first really uh, elected president, or he won that title. Uh, so how do you explain what went wrong, if anything went wrong, considering he was democratically elected? Well, there's a lot that's gone wrong here. I mean, let's, let's just be very blunt about what happened today. This was a military coup. The military is saying that it's not a coup and that it's just simply doing uh, what the people are asking for. But at the end of the day, it was the military that brought down Mohamed Morsi, who was the elected president of Egypt. And so this is a deeply flawed process. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at the way the Muslim Brotherhood governed, if you look at the way that Mohamed Morsi tried to hijack the judiciary, the way that he tried to install governors throughout the country uh, and, and, and other non-democratic moves, this was obviously uh, a, an affront to uh, democracy as well. And so what we're looking at is two wrongs. They don't make a right here, uh, but they've offset one another, and now we're looking at the toppling of one government with hopefully, again, and we can only say hopefully because we don't know where this is going to go, but hopefully you're going to see some new institutions that are stronger, more resilient, and, uh, and more prone to democracy. What do you say to those who say, wait a second, he you know, was in power, he had another three years, you should have given him at least three years to uh, serve his time and then question whether or not he, did, he was right or wrong. What do you say to those people? I would say that that's a valid argument. Again, I would not say that there is a right or wrong party. Obviously, mm -hmm. there are millions of people out in the streets right now, uh, the non-Islamist opposition, that are jubilant. They're extremely happy that Mohamed Morsi has been toppled. And I should say that as someone that, that, that believes that uh, political Islam is a dangerous ideology, I would say that I celebrate that as well. That said, you know, this was a very undemocratic thing that happened today. 
having the military come in and topple the Muslim Brotherhood is not something that we should celebrate if what we're looking for ultimately is democracy in Egypt. So again, you know, this is, this, this is one of those areas where it's just a lot of gray. I can't tell you that there was right or wrong. Uh, this is just, I think, a very unfortunate reality that uh -huh. Egypt is still not stable two years after the fall of Hosni Mubarak. And Jonathan, so all the legislation that Mohammed Morsi put in place, all the laws that he put in place over the course of the year, do they go by the wayside now or are they still stand? I think it's unclear. I think you're going to see revisions of a, of a lot of those institutions, uh, and, and certainly the way that I think they're governed. Uh, but the, the laws themselves, some may be scrapped, some not. Uh, and I think that will be uh, up to this transitional leadership. Uh, and then I, I think probably, again, referendums not unlike what we saw before over the last couple of years. Okay, and so you are in Washington, D.C. We are waiting for a response from the White House. So what sort of stance do you think the United States will take or should take on this? Well, it's actually a very interesting debate that's going to take place here. Um, you know, we have laws in place that prohibit U.S. financial aid uh, from going to countries where there's been a military coup. And we provide here in the United States $1.5 billion to the Egyptians annually to provide the army uh, with a great deal of the hardware that it needs in order to function. And so uh, there's going to be a very painful debate here about whether this was in fact a coup, which I think it, it's, it's undeniable at this point. And so that will uh, ultimately impact potentially how much aid we give the Egyptians. And in the meantime, we also have to struggle with this notion of, okay, on the one hand, uh, Islamists fell and they did it to themselves in many ways. On the other hand, again, we're looking at a very non-democratic process, uh, which should give us plenty of cause for concern. Jonathan, uh, when I asked you about the transition, you said that hopefully in a few months, possibly in a few months down the road, we'd be leading, or Egypt would be leading to an election, another election. Is it possible that Mohamed Morsi could be running in that election? I highly doubt it. Um, I would not be surprised to see the Muslim Brotherhood come back. Um, you know, they, they have they have a political party. It's it's legal. Uh, it's not been banned as a result of this. I think that uh, the likely outcome of this is that the Muslim Brotherhood still has millions of followers. I think it would probably still have a significant role to play uh, in the future of Egypt, and we would have to hope so. Uh, quite frankly, uh, you know, the, the whole problem with the Brotherhood is that they were not inclusive. They didn't include other aspects of, uh, of Egyptian uh, uh, society, uh, other political parties that should have probably been involved in the governing process. We need to make sure that whoever comes to power next does not bar the Muslim Brotherhood and create new enemies. And by the way, we should also note that the Brotherhood, while it's nonviolent, has many allies that are violent. And we've seen Salafi groups come out already and threaten religious and political violence against those who would potentially topple Morsi, which you know obviously happened today. So now we're watching to see whether, in fact, that religious or political violence breaks out. Uh, I just want to ask you lastly, you know, a lot of people think of Egypt as the place where the Arab Spring started. It wasn't, but a lot of people think of that as kind of the capsule of the, the, the country where it really kind of rocked a nation, the Arab Spring, because we saw so many people out at Tahrir Square, like we're seeing right now in Cairo. I'm curious how nervous you think other countries, especially those that were involved in their own Arab Springs, uh, should be in light of what's happened today in Egypt. There are a lot of actors around the region that are very, very nervous. Uh, it's a great question. I think Tunisia, for example, is uh, that's obviously where the Arab Spring uh, truly began. Uh, the Nakba party there is probably looking on with trepidation. Uh, I would say that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in Kuwait uh, has already been vilified. The Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan uh, has got to be wondering what its future is going to look like. And even a Muslim Bro Brotherhood splinter group like Hamas in the Gaza Strip also needs to be very worried right now because the Muslim Brotherhood government in, uh, in Egypt was its lifeline, and uh, it looks like that lifeline is about to be cut off. Jonathan, thank you so much for your insight. Really appreciate it. Jonathan Shanzer, Vice President for Research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, speaking to us from Washington.